As good as Home Assistant is, there might come a time when you want to migrate it to another computer. Maybe the computer that they start out on is just now running out of resources. Or maybe you actually want to run it on a different type of platform. Whatever the reason, you can actually migrate Home Assistant to another computer and save yourself a lot of time in the process. But how do you actually transfer Home Assistant from one computer to another? Well, if that's something that you're interested in finding out, then stick around and watch this video, because that's what we'll be going over. Now, Home Assistant isn't an all-in-one solution. It actually runs on top of an operating system. And what we're going to be doing is to take advantage of that to transfer Home Assistant from one computer to another. What we're going to be doing is to take a backup of Home Assistant on our original computer and then restore that on our new computer. Now, granted, it does mean you have to install a fresh copy of Home Assistant onto your new computer. And you do have to go through that onboarding process. But once you've done that, you'll then be able to restore your original Home Assistant setup onto your new computer. Now, the first thing you want to do is to install Home Assistant onto a new computer. And I'm going to assume you already know how to do that because you've already got another computer running Home Assistant. All you need to do, though, is to go through that initial installation and the onboarding wizard so that you can then log in and have a fresh installation of Home Assistant like this one. There's nothing else has been added on. There's no add-ons, there's no integrations or anything. And that's because what we're going to then do is to actually restore an existing copy of Home Assistant onto this one. Now, one thing I'll point out is that this particular computer has a different IP address to my original Home Assistant computer. And that's deliberate because you can't have two computers on the same network with the same IP address. And I want this computer up and running without impacting my existing Home Assistant computer. Another thing to point out is that you want to make sure both of these computers are running the same version of software. We don't want to run into compatibility issues where, for instance, we restore from an older version onto a newer version and find things break, for instance. In which case, the easiest thing to do is to make sure both of these computers are running the latest version of software. Now, the next thing to do is to take a backup of our existing Home Assistant computer so that we can restore that onto the new computer. But before I do that, though, I want to make sure that things appear to be working because the last thing I want is to transfer all of this across, find something isn't working, and wrongly assume that either something went wrong during the migration or that there's a problem on the new computer if the problem was there all along. So I don't have a great deal on this computer because it's just for a lab, but as you can see, I've got a tracker up here showing my presence. I've got an ES Presence device showing it's connected. So that's good because it's telling me the whole ES Presence system's working, which includes an MQTT broker. Lower down, I've got a meter plus reporting humidity and temperature settings, which is good because I've got a Bluetooth adapter plugged into this um, computer, which is giving me access to that switch button meter. Higher up, I've got a door sensor. Now that operates on Zigbee. And that works because I've got a Zigbee controller plugged into the computer. So we'll test that to make sure that that's uh, working fine. So yeah, it's going open, closed, open, closed. So that's good to see. Lower down, I've got a motion sensor. Now that uses Z-Wave because I've got a Z-Wave controller plugged into the computer. So test to make sure that, that works. Yep, that works fine. Now you might notice I've got some helpers over here that are turning on and off when I'm either opening or closing the door sensor or uh, playing around with that motion sensor. The reason being is I deliberately included this so that I could set up rules in Node-RED to test the actual migration of Node-RED as well. But all in all, things do seem to be fine. So next thing to do is to actually take a backup uh, of Home Assistant. So we're going to go to Settings, then to System. We'll then click on Backups. Then I'll click Create Backup. I need to give it a name, so I'm just going to call this one Migration. Now, I don't want a full backup. I don't have any sensitive information on this computer, like user accounts or passwords. If I did, then actually putting on a password protection would make a lot of sense. 
in my case I don't really need it so I'm just going to click on create now how long it takes to create this backup depends on the computer all the things you've got installed on home assistant and so on in my case it's hardly anything on so that backup is uh, really quick that actual file has been stored on the local backup of the computer and I need to transfer it across to the new computer and what I can do is to actually download it to this computer that I'm using to actually connect um, to both Home Assistant computers. So I'm going to click on the actual file that we've just created. And then down here, I'm going to select the option, the menu option that we've got, and then click on Download Backup. Now, in my case, I'm using Firefox, so it, it automatically downloaded that to my downloads folder. But otherwise, do pay attention to where you save that file, because, well, obviously you're going to need it to restore Home Assistant not to your new computer. But that's it, we've now got a backup copy of Home Assistant. In which case, I'm actually done with this computer now. I want to actually sh shut it down, and the reason being is that I need the IP address of this computer to put onto the new computer. And I can't do that, as I say, if you've got duplicate IP addresses on uh, the network. I can't have two computers with the same IP address, so I have to shut this computer down now. So I'm going to go to Settings, System, and then in the newer versions of Home Assistant, we get this power button up in the top right corner. So I'll select that. Select Advanced Options. Click on Shutdown System. And then click on Shutdown. So that'll give us a clean shutdown of the entire computer. And then, as I say, I'll be able to repurpose its IP address so that I can use it on the new computer. And I deliberately want to do that because, well, I'm using an MQTT broker, for example. I've got devices that are actually pointing to the IP address of this computer. So I don't want to go around devices and update the IP addressing on them to point to the IP address of this computer, for example. And I don't want to have to update firewall rules and so on. So this is the easier way that I see of doing it. Well, now that the original Home Assistant is turned off, you can transfer its IP address across to your new one. And that's what I've done. So as you can see, I'm pointing the web browser same FQDN that I was before, but this time we're connected into the new actual Home Assistant. Now, how you actually update your computer really depends on your circumstances. Mine had a static IP address, so I just had to update that. Now, as well as changing the IP address, you're going to have to transfer across any adapters such as Zigbee or Z-Wave controllers, Bluetooth adapters and so on. I've done that and, well, that's where I've fallen at the first fence basically. If we go to notifications and check out new discoveries, it's picking up the Z-Wave controller and the Zigbee controller, but not the Bluetooth adapter. If we have a look on the console here, well, it's not detecting what this third USB device is. It doesn't recognize it. Now that Bluetooth adapter did work on my original computer. This one is a supervised install. So it sits on top of uh, the Debian operating system but it's actually pointing at a Raspberry Pi, which is serving up these USB devices over IP. And yet yeah, it just doesn't recognize it. In which case, before I actually go any further with this uh, restore of Home Assistant, I need to fix this Bluetooth problem. And that means I need to find a Bluetooth adapter, which will work with my Raspberry Pi. Well, that turned out to be a bit of a rookie mistake. Um, yeah, apparently this is a Debian computer and it didn't have the Bluetooth package installed. Once I installed Bluetooth package, well, yeah, the Bluetooth adapter showed up in Home Assistant. So there you go, lesson learned. Anyway, what we now want to do is to restore Home Assistant onto this computer. I mean, there's no point in installing these because these are just integrations. We want to do a restore of Home Assistant over the top of this anyway. So we're going to go to Settings, then to System. We'll click on Backups. Then up here in the top right corner, we're going to click on the menu and then select Upload Backup. Point this to where our actual file is that we actually took for the backup of our original Home Assistant. I'm just going to double click on that and now it's uploaded that actual file to the local storage of this computer. Now what I want to do is an actual restore. So I'm going to click on restore 
and it says, are you sure you want to wipe your system and restore this backup? And I'm going to say, yes, I do, actually. So I'm going to click on restore. And then off it goes. Well, the restore has now completed and I've logged back in. $64 million question is, has it worked? Well, look down the left-hand side, I can see extra entries there that weren't there before. So that's a good sign. I mean, we've got Node RAID, Studio Code Server, Terminal, like battery warning, hacks. And I did at some point see it mentioning that it was starting up Zigbee. So fingers crossed, this has all gone to plan. So what I'm going to do is go to Overview. And, hmm. Okay, so the ES Presence part has got a bit of a problem. I can see that straight away. We are picking up connectivity for the actual switch but the meter that we've got down here. Now, that suggests that at least the Bluetooth por uh, portion of it's working. I mean, we've still got a notification, so I'm going to click on that. Uh, that was just a failed login attempt, so that's fine. Uh, if we go back to settings, go to devices and services. So, yeah, it looks okay, except for that Bluetooth part, uh, except for the ES Presence part. So that could be something that's needs investigating but we'll come back to overview here i'm going to check out and see if zigbee's working i mean it's oh there you go it was it detected motion Woohoo! it detected motion i can see i must have sort of like my hand must have just glanced by the motion sensor so let's have a bit of a play around with our door sensor so that's good out of curiosity let's uh i'll have a bit of a play around with a switch but bot as well and see if that gets detected it's not showing up on here i must admit let's try that so that's something i'll need to check into so that could be in part due to my own setup but oh there you go all of a sudden the S presence has picked up, so that's good. That's a good sign. But for good measure, what I'm going to do is just actually reboot the computer. I'm going to do that and see if that resolves the problems, because at the moment, the only thing I seem to have a problem is connectivity to that actual switch board. But, but otherwise, so far, some, uh, things do seem to be working. I mean, the node red part of it's picking up. Uh, yeah, because the helpers are working, so that's a good sign. I mean, at least the Bluetooth, I know, is working to some extent because it's being able to talk to the actual meter. But that's the only challenge I need to look into. So, first things first, we'll reboot this, just see that sorted out. And best way to do that is to actually, because this is running on a Debian operating system, it's best to actually do the reboot from here. So, go to settings. Uh, system, click on that power button, advanced options, and then we'll tell it to reboot the entire system. So this for me is a kind of a clean way just to make sure that Home Assistant it's, as well gets properly closed down uh, before the actual computer reboots. Well, the computer is now back up and running and well, it's working, so that's good to see. Um, the actual migration was actually pretty straightforward just transferring a backup from one computer to another, essentially. One thing I did make sure, though, was that the ordering of the USB devices stayed the same. So the original computer had USB devices physically plugged in to specific ports, and they were then being presented to a virtual machine that I was running Home Assistant on in a specific order. With this virtual machine, it's a supervised install and what I've done is to make sure that the ordering of those USB devices is exactly the same. Just to be on the safe side and, well, everything went pretty smoothly, basically. Well, except for a like, minor rookie mistake, but, you know, these things happen. You know, it's one of those things. But in any case, it is now working. So we've got an ES Presence device, which is picking up my tracker. So I can see it's picking up and my location, it's 
obviously connected to the MQTT broker because we've got that connected uh, sign there. So that's good to see. Then we've got a SwitchBot Meter Plus, which has been picked up through Bluetooth. Then we've got a motion sensor, which has been picked up uh, through a Z-Wave controller. So, yeah, that's still working. And Node Red's working because the helper was updated there automatically once motion was detected. Once that clears, then uh, the helper will get disabled. So I know Node Red is working as well. We then got our Zigbee controller there. So that's being picked up as well. Again, Node Red is updating the helper as, though, as I make those changes. So that just leaves this SwitchBot bot, which for some strange reason didn't seem to be working. But this time it just seemed to be fine. I mean, there can be a delay sometimes, I've noticed, but... So I've just turned it on now through the app. Now, sometimes there's a bit of a delay, sometimes there's not. I mean, I've got a connection over the network using USB, uh, yeah, USB over IP, so it's a bit hit and miss as to the sort of the latency that I get. But for me, that's not particularly crucial because what I've got this set up for, well, not the specific version, the real version, it basically turns that fan on and off. So it's the one that's controlling the fan anyway. So it doesn't really matter um, if there's a slight bit of latency there. The whole point is this, this is all working. Now, one thing I do want to check is I've got, I've got a battery warning up here. Now that's to do with auto entities, which I've brought across using hacks. So I'm just going to swap the battery out and see up oh, there you go so i just put in a flat battery into this uh, motion sensor and sure enough yep it's picking that up the fact that the battery's uh, hasn't got enough power so i'll put the original back in yeah there you go so that's uh, so hax is working as well so for me that just leaves the terminal well i always have this turned off anyway for security reasons i don't want the actual ssh terminal session running all of the time so I deliberately only start this as and when I want to use it. And then I've got Studio Code Server, which is another add-on that I've got installed. Yeah, that, that's working fine as well. So, yeah, I mean, the, the actual migration was pretty straightforward, really. I mean, just a case of back it up on one computer and restore it on another. That's it. Pretty easy, really. Now, if you find this video to be useful, then do consider subscribing to the channel, as that would really mean a lot to me. But it's also a good indicator to let me know how videos like this are helpful to people such as yourself that are watching. In which case, thank you. On the other hand, if you're not ready for that level of commitment, then I'd really appreciate it if you could press the like button, because that way that will help to get the video out to other people that might find it useful as well.